everybody and welcome back to room nine, our region's largest classroom. My name is Miss St. Louis and I'm a teacher at Rogers Elementary School in the Melville School District and we are located in South St. Louis County. Today I'm here to teach a reading lesson that's geared towards students who are in the third grade, but all learners are more than welcome to join and learn with us. So let's get started. Today, let's start off by talking about some story elements. Now, story elements are the parts of a story, and they help readers to follow and understand the story. And they help you kind of understand how the story is organized. So when we talk about our story elements, there are four main parts that we are going to talk about. Let's go over those. The first is the characters. Those are the people, animals, or things in a story, right? They're who that story is about, the things that are making those actions. Then we have our setting. A setting is where and when a story takes place. So that's super important to remember. There are always two parts to a story. Where is it happening and when? What time, right? Some stories happen in the past, some stories happen in the future, and some even happen in the present time. So that's something that's important to know. Next, we have the problem. Problems are the conflict or challenges in the story, right? So something that's gone wrong, there's sort of some sort of issue that our character is going to try and solve. And that brings us to our solution. And that is how the problem is fixed or solved, right? Our character is going on this journey to solve their problem and find a solution. Now this week, we are gonna focus deep into characters. That's what we're gonna talk about all week. So let's take a closer look at our characters. animals, creatures, or things in a story, right? So we can have people, right? You could have a story about two best friends. You can have a story about animals, right? Maybe you read a story about a giraffe. You can read a story about creatures, right? Monsters. Or you could read a story about things, crayons, rocks, anything you can think of. Now characters have a few things we know about them. They have actions, things that they do. They have looks, right? How do they look? What do they dress like? They have thoughts, right? They're thinking just like we are. They have their words, right? Sometimes we refer to that as dialogue. What do they say? And they also have feelings, right? The things that they feel inside. Now these pieces of a character, those are character traits, things that we know about them. So if we dive a little bit even further into a character, we have those traits. And they describe what a character is like on both the inside and the outside. So it's important to remember that when we are discussing a character, there's those two parts. What we see on the outside, which we call physical traits, and what we see, we can't really see on the inside, and we have to refer to and infer, those are the personality traits. So first we have those physical traits of a character. They're the outside traits that can be seen or described in pictures or text, right? So for example, Lucy has short hair. She is short. She's wearing a dress. So let's try to think about some um, of the physical traits by looking at some of the books we're going to explore a little further later on in the week. Here's the first one. The Very Impatient Caterpillar. Take a look at that character, the caterpillar. Think in your head, what physical traits do we see with this character? So if I'm looking at him, he's small, right? He's a caterpillar, he's a bug, right? So I can describe his size. I can describe his color. He's green, he's got purple and orange polka dots, okay? I could describe that he has a yellow belly, right? So those are the, some of the things that I can see physically. I can describe him physically. Let's try the next one. What about this, Pig the Pug? Take a closer look at him. How could you describe Pig's the physical traits? Small. He's a dog. Yeah, maybe he's fat or large. 
He has big eyes. He's white with brown. So we're describing how he looks. Let's try the last one. The squirrels who squabbled. Take a look at that. How could we describe their physical traits? They're red and orange. They have yellow eyes. They're tall, right? Those, that's how we can describe how they physically look. Now, the other type of traits we have are personality traits. Those are the inside traits that are inferred by actions and dialogue. So infer means that we look at the clues that we get from the text and the picture and we draw a conclusion, right? We're kind of making an educated guess based on what we know and our schema. Now schema is all the information we have in our brain, right? As we live and go through our life, we are gathering information. And so we can use that to help us make those educated guesses. All right. And we can guess about things like actions, dialogue, thoughts, and attitudes. All of those help us to make those guesses. So for example, Lucy is very confident, right? She raised her hand in the air and declared, I know the answer, right? So she's confident in her answer. She got her hand up and she knows because she made that declaration. So using that dialogue, we were able to infer that she is confident. Now, just by looking at the pictures of some of these guys, we not, might not be able to make a lot of inferences about their personality traits because we haven't read the books yet. We don't know a lot about them. So we'll have to take that and learn about them a little bit more as we read those books later on in the week. But let's do a little trial. I have some little quotes for books that you're gonna help me to do, use. So when we're inferring those personality traits, we can use dialogue, feelings, thoughts, and actions to help us. So let's try and figure out which of these is going to help us. Here's my first excerpt from a book. This is how we're going to split the work, Daniela said sternly. I'll work on the poster while you two work on what we're going to say for the presentation. Do you think we're going to use dialogue, feelings, thoughts, or actions here? That's right, we're gonna use dialogue because Daniela is saying something, right? What do you think about Daniela? Let me read that one more time and I want you to think, what kind of person is Daniela? This is how we're going to split the work, Daniela said sternly. I'll work on the poster while you two work on what we're going to say for the presentation. Hmm. So I'm thinking about what she said and even how she said it. What kind of person do you think she is? Yeah, maybe a little bit bossy, right? She said it sternly, right? She wants to be that leader. So maybe she enjoys being a leader. She likes being in charge, right? We know that when people, right, are in those kinds of roles where they're in charge, they say things a little sternly. They tell people what to do. So there we are applying a little bit of our schema to our knowledge. Let's try another one. Brandon glanced at his math assignment and sighed. It would take too long to do these five story problems. He quickly scribbled some random numbers on the lines and slammed his book shut. Done. Hmm. Do you think we're gonna talk about his feelings, his thoughts, or his actions? Probably his actions, right? He did a lot in this. So as I read it again, I want you to think about what can we infer about Brandon and his personality? Brandon glanced at his math assignment and sighed. It would take too long to do these five story problems. He quickly scribbled some random numbers on the lines and slammed his book shut. Done. Hmm. What kind of person do you think Brandon is? Yeah, maybe he's a little lazy, right? He just wanted to throw something down on the paper and be done with it. Maybe he's stuck, right? Maybe he doesn't know what to do, so he was just over it, okay? What else? Maybe he's frustrated, right? 
He doesn't know what to do, okay? And we can use our own schema, right? All of us at some point have maybe felt a little frustrated or a little stuck by something that we were learning and we really, we were kind of frustrated and we just wanted to give up, okay? So we're using that schema, our knowledge about ourselves and things that we already know about to help figure out what Brandon's personality traits are. Let's try another one. When Seth saw the pile of junk, a feeling of excitement bubbled up inside him. He couldn't wait to begin building the object he was imagining. What do you think we're going to use? Feelings or thoughts? Hmm. Very good. It's feelings, right? We've got a lot of feelings. So as I read this one more time, I want you to be thinking about what kind of person is Seth? What are his personality traits? When Seth saw the pile of junk, a feeling of excitement bubbled up inside of him. He couldn't wait to begin building the object he was imagining. Hmm, what do you think about Seth? Yeah, he's kind of creative, right? He's building something, so we might think that he's creative. Very good, what else? Yeah, he's happy, right? He's got these feelings, this bubbling of excitement, so he's happy. He's excited about things that are happening, right? You might have experienced some of these feelings before when you're doing something that you really love. You feel those bubbles of excitement and you can relate that to how you were feeling when you felt that. Let's try one last one. Kelly wondered what would happen if she told her dad that her mom said the sleepover was okay. And if she told her mom that her dad had already approved the sleepover, Kelly grinned. I think this might work. So what do you think? That's right, it's thoughts. It's our only one left. We're thinking about what Kelly said. So as I read it one more time, I want you to think about Kelly's personality traits. Kelly wondered what would happen if she told her dad that her mom said the sleepover was okay. And if she told her mom that her dad had already approved the sleepover, Kelly grinned. I think this might work. What do we think about Kelly? Oh, she's a little tricky, right? She's playing a trick on her mom and dad, right? She's trying to be a little tricky. What else? Yeah, maybe she's not really following those directions, right? She's not doing what she's supposed to be doing, right? She's trying to play those tricks again. So you can think about that. Maybe there's a time in your life, right, when you tried to play a trick on somebody, you had these same, maybe you had these same thoughts. Okay, so these are the ways that we can infer some of those personality traits. So remember, when we talk about traits of a character, there are two different kinds, right? Physical traits are how people look. It's what we can see on the outside, okay? Personality traits, we have to make some inferences based on the dialogue, feelings, thoughts, or actions, but what a person is like on the inside. So. What we're gonna do now is we're going to read some short little passages and do our best to try and figure out and infer some personality and character traits. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, so let's try identifying some more character traits. We're gonna start with those physical traits. So we're gonna look at some pictures of some characters in some books and try and identify those physical characteristics. Remember, those are outside traits that can be seen or described based on the pictures or text. Today, we're going to focus on pictures. So, first, we're going to look at the book, The Mouse and the Lion and the Mouse. Let's look at this lion right here. What words can you use to describe the lion? Good, he's big. He has a yellow mane, a brown body. He has orange eyes. He might be furry, right? He might be very soft. Now look at the mouse. See him? What do you notice about the mouse? How could you describe him? He's small, he's gray, has pink 
pose, right? He might be soft, right? So those are some great words to describe him. Let's try another one. Here's the book, Dragons versus Dinos. Look at this dinosaur here. How could you describe that dinosaur? He's blue, he's big, he's kind of large. He's wearing a diaper, so he might be a little stinky, right? Happy we can see that from the smile on his face. Right. Maybe he's a baby, so we can describe his age, right? He's wearing that diaper. Very good. Let's try another one. This is Pa Jingle Bob and the fastest knitter in the West. So let's look at Pa Jingle Bob. What do you notice about him? He's a man, right? He's kind of a big, right? He looks very tall, large. He's got a red nose. Kind of hairy, right? You see all that hair on his arms. He's got a mustache, long hair, bit of a beard. Right? He's hungry, right? Look at him. Look at that face. And when we see all the food around him, he's hungry, right? That's great to describe him. Okay? Look at the girl. What do you think about the girl? How can we describe her? Yeah, she's young. She's got red hair and those pigtails. Okay, kind of short maybe. She's a little messy, right? When we see and we look at her, we see that um, she's, her hair is a little messed up, so she's a little messy. Very good. Those are some great describing words. Let's look at our next book. This is That's Not Right. Looking at the girl, how can we describe the girl in this picture? Good, she's got that orange red hair. She's got rosy cheeks. She's young, she has small eyes. Very good, a red shirt. Excellent. What about the little bug with her? How can we describe that little bug? Get a little closer. Good, he's gray, he's got on red boots. Small, long, right? He's got a long body. Hey, very good. Those are some great words that we can use to describe characters based off of what we see, right? So those are those physical characteristics. Now we also have our personality traits, right? Those are the inside traits that are inferred by actions and dialogue, right? We're looking at attitudes, thoughts, actions, and dialogue. So now we're gonna practice with that. I'm gonna read you some short little excerpts from some text, and your job is to help me figure out what we know about the characters. Here's our first one. Keisha always says please and thank you when she gets her lunch in the cafeteria. She talks nicely to the servers and to her classmates. Keisha is what? How would you describe Keisha? Good, maybe she's polite, right? She's using words like please and thank you. Good, she's respectful to other people, very good. She's kind, nice, right? Those are some really great describing words for Keisha. Excellent. All right, next. Allie is always telling her friends what to do. She tells them what games to play and what color crayons to use. How would you describe Allie? Allie's a little bossy, right? Yep, yeah, she's bossy, what else? Maybe a little mean. 
She's a leader, right? She's taking on that role. Great words. Excellent job, guys. You guys are experts at this already, and it's only day one. Next, Joe does not want to do his work at school. He lays his head down on his desk, and he never turns in any of his homework. How would you describe Joe? Lazy, right? He's not doing anything. What else? Maybe he's tired, right? He puts his head down. What do you, and you put your head down when you're tired, so maybe he's tired. Maybe confused, right? Maybe he doesn't understand, so he's confused frustrated, right? Those are some great words to describe how Joe might be feeling. Excellent. Let's try another one. Maria talks to new students when they join her school. She invites them to play, to play games with her and her friends at recess. Maria is, hmm, how could we describe Maria? Very good, she's kind, she's respectful, she's helpful, right? Those are some great words. She's friendly, caring, all great words, right? Maria is the type of person you would wanna meet if you were new at your school. Let's try another one. Jamal says, yes ma'am, when his teacher asks him to do something. And he waits his turn to talk. Hmm, what do you know about Jamal? He's polite, good. Patient, he's waiting, very good. Kind, respectful, all great words to describe Jamal. All right, next. John didn't do his homework this week. And when his teacher collected the homework on Friday, John told her, her his baby brother ripped it up. What do we know about John based on this little excerpt? That's right, he lied, right? He made up a story, he fibbed, right? He was not honest, he was dishonest, very good. He's not respectful. Excellent, those are some great words. Let's try another one. Mr. Mike loves dressing up in costumes. He wears costumes to school based on what books his class is reading. Today, he dressed up like a pirate and talked in a pirate voice. Mr. Mike is, hmm, funny, silly, Creative, fun, all right? Those are all really great words to describe that teacher. Excellent. Alexa likes to try new things. Last week, she went rock climbing and even though the rocks were really scary, how would you describe Alexa? Yeah, brave, right? She did something that's really scary. I don't know if I would do that. Confident, exciting, happy, right? Those are some great words to describe Alexa. All right, we'll try two more. Lana does not like to talk in class. She doesn't raise her hand because she's afraid she's gonna get the answer wrong. How would you describe Lana? Shy, very good. Yeah, maybe she's not confident. Yeah, right, she's not willing to do that. Sometimes we use that word, it's called timid, right? She doesn't really wanna come up. Kind of means the same thing as shy. Very good, one more. Fred takes snacks from the closet when his grandma isn't looking and he hides them in it under his bed later to eat. How would you describe Fred? He's 
sneaky, dishonest, hungry, greedy. Those are some great words we can use to describe him. So as you can see, just based off of text, right? What I was reading to you, we can infer some things about these characters, right? We're using the words as reference, but we're also using our schema, right? That knowledge that we have inside of our brain, whether that's because we've already read a similar book, right? We've watched a movie where something similar happens, right? Or we've experienced it for ourselves. We keep those memories and start to relate them to how certain things are. So if someone's really nice, we know what that's like because we've experienced it for ourselves. If someone's being mean, we know what that looks like and feels like because we've experienced it for ourselves. So we're using our own knowledge to help us in the future. Very cool. So today we explored in-depthly character traits. Later on this week, we're gonna be reading some of those books I showed you earlier. The Very Impatient Caterpillar, Pig the Pug, one of my favorites and the squirrels who squabbled. We're gonna read these books and learn a little bit more about the characters in them and do a little bit of our own identifying their character traits, both those physical traits that we see on the outside and their personality traits, how they are on the inside. So we're gonna to get to take the knowledge we learned today and apply it to some real life books. So I hope that you'll join us again later on in this week and I hope that you have a great, fantastic rest of your day and we'll see you again next time. Bye guys, thanks for coming. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you. 